Hello, Taurus sisters. This is Amy. Welcome back to the podcast. So we've been working through a series called Finding Shalom, chasing after the way the Father wants us to live our lives instead of looking like the world. One way the world looks is women are busy, busy, busy. And like we have this badge of honor of busyness. And the busier we are and the more stressed out we are, somehow the better, stronger woman we are. That's what the world tells us. The Bible tells us a completely different, upside-down, topsy-turvy way to live. We're supposed to work hard, but not be stressed out. We're supposed to have a peace that passes understanding. It so radiates from us. The world looks at us and says, why are they so relaxed? The world is falling apart. Things are not good in her life. She has all these problems, but she's content and she's shalomi. <laughs> that is what we want them to look at us. And they're, they're going to say her piece, like we can't even understand it. And of course, our answer is the hope that lies within us, the hope for a future, the hope that even though we will all die one day, we will be resurrected again and that we have eternal life to look forward to with our Savior. That is the ultimate reason we ought not to be overly stressed out all the time because we know that all of this is temporary. We're just um, sojourners passing through this life and it's but a whisper. It has its trials, sisters. I know we're going to talk about trials, believe me, but our overall ongoing demeanor must be shalom. So we're working through a series and on my website, go to TorahSisters.com, go find the free printables and I'll put the link in the description below. I have a free printable that I call the Finding Shalom Checklist. Lots and lots of ways for you to um, look at your life and say, where um, can I tweak something in my life because I can't sleep at night. I'm stressed out. I'm snapping at people um, and something is wrong either in your heart or your life. Um, some things you cannot control, sisters, I know, but some things we can control. So that is sort of like a just a checklist to go over to maybe, you know, prompt your thinking of things in your life that you can control that can give you more peace in your life so that you can love others better um, and also have more joy and contentment for yourself. This episode, so go download that. It's a free printable. You can download that checklist. This episode is about doing what is right. The last one we talked about, stop sinning. And wow, there was a lot of feedback about that. And you, I'll just say a lot of you were challenged and helped. And I, I'm very, very glad about that. And I'm glad you told me that because doing this is not easy. And when I talk about those hard things, like we talked about some hard things in the last um, episode, I wonder if I've gone too far because these are things I struggle with too. Like who am I to even say that out loud? But you say that it helps you and so let's keep going. Like let's say the hard things because if I'm just up here being wishy-washy, tickling your ears and just saying pleasant things, none of, we're all just wasting our time here. <laughs> so, all right, we will keep tackling hard things, sisters. And it challenges me to believe me, working through this in depth is growing me up too. I'm right in the thick of it with you. Why do you think I talk about this? Because I've been chasing peace for the last several years because I, I was in a, I went through a time where I was not well and I then wasn't loving people well. So let's just keep chasing peace. So in this episode, we're going to talk about doing what is right. The last episode was to stop sinning. So what are we um, running away from? We're running away from sin. Now what are we going to turn to? Now we're going to turn, we're going to tell Shiva to what is right. Um, and by the way, that is the theme of the Torah Sisters Retreat coming up. The deadline for the early bird discount is December 1st. So total sideline here. If you are thinking about coming to the Torah Sisters Retreat in Michigan in May, go to TorahSisters.com slash retreat. Look at all the details. Uh, and if you want to keep talking about Teshuvah, letting go of what you don't need and holding on to what we do and what is good, that's going to be the theme. Christy Jordan and I will, and I will be speaking at the retreat and I would love to have you there. So let's dive into this 
first of all, doing what is right is a little different than stop sinning. Um, they're kind of different topics. So in the last one, we analyzed our hearts and our lives for where we can get stuff out. This time, let's talk about what to chase after, what to put on, what to do. And ladies, this is an enormous topic. It is far too long for one little podcast. I mean, we could probably talk about this for a year. So I'm going to give you a big overview um, and we're going to move fast because, um, well, time is short. <laughs> we don't all have all day, but I hope that there's something in here that you can grab onto and chase after. I do think in my own life, so again, I can only speak for myself, but it, I realize I'm usually not the only one. Sometimes I can't sleep at night and usually when we can't sleep at night and it's not caffeine, it's because the father's trying to talk to us or because we're running away from him or we're like, you know, stressed out or unsettled in our spirit. One of the things when I look back over the last several years that has kept me awake at night is not doing what he wants me to do. So not doing what is right, because if he wants me to do something, it must be right. <laughs> um, so when I have squished that, so he talks to us in the still small voice, often at night. And when I squish that still small voice and I bury it under the rug and I, I say, no, that can't be God. No, he's not talking to me. No, that's not for me. And, and I don't obey it. I, you know, I don't shema it. <laughs> I don't sleep well. And sometimes this goes on for months or even years. Uh, and I know some of you have experienced that. You can leave comments and tell us about how you have squished that still small voice. And then once you answer it and do it, once you hear it and you do it and you obey it, no matter how crazy, then you have peace. Um, then, you, then you can sleep at night. It's an amazing thing that he gives us this peace and this restful spirit when we're walking in obedience. So let's, let's keep chasing after this. Some ways I think that, and I'm just going to throw out some ideas. So every one of you is different. Your circumstances are all so incredibly and beautifully unique. You guys don't want to be like me and I don't want to be like you or we're all the same. <laughs> we all are in different, we're in different sit situations and circumstances and we ought to be doing our own sort of things. Although a lot of our things are similar. So here's where I'm getting at. I'm going to throw out some ways in which maybe you're supposed to be doing something that the father is telling you to do and you're not, and therefore that might be part of the reason that you're not having peace and shalom. One thing might be just plain homeschooling. Some of you might be feeling a call to homeschool. You know, he's telling you to homeschool, and I don't think everybody has to homeschool. That's not what I'm saying here. But if the father is telling you to homeschool, and you're telling him no, you're probably having a hard time falling asleep at night. Because whenever we tell him no, he's going to, hopefully, if you're walking with him, he's going to make you unsettled in your spirit. You're going to have that conviction that happens when we are disobedient. Uh, so, you know, if your children are struggling somehow, if there's a lot of rebellion in the home, and you have this, you know, the, you think the Holy Spirit's telling you the solution might be to bring them home and to homeschool them, and you're not doing what the Spirit is telling you to do, um, you're going to, it just exacerbates everything. Because now you have problems in the home, plus now you are not settled. You are restless and you are antsy. And when we're seeking after him and we're not answering him with obedience, we kind of don't deserve to sleep well <laughs> at night, do we? I mean, I'm just going to say the hard things here. So that might be it for you. Maybe you are being called to homeschool and you're not doing it because of, well, we'll talk about things like this throughout these podcasts, why you might not do that. Um, excuses that you might make to not do that. And I tell you what, I mean, some of your reasons might be legitimately 
you know, hard circumstances for you. But if he's telling you to do something, do you not trust him to make it work out? Maybe not how you think it should work out, but do you trust him to work it out? Another way, and I'm just going to throw some out, um, maybe even just wearing your ZZ to work. Some of you might not be fully walking out the commands because you're afraid of man. But if you know it to be right, you better start doing it. Some of you might be being called to move. Literally move to a different house or to downsize to a different home or to move to a different town or even another country. Uh, that's really drastic. But if the father is wanting you to do it, you're not going to sleep well until you do it. Some of you are being convicted to give more generously of your time or with your money and you're not answering. Some of us um, need to speak up more for the oppressed and the weak. Sometimes I think we see great injustice being done and when we remain silent, we don't have shalom because we ought to be speaking up. Some of us might be this is a big one, not answering the call to do foster care or adopt. And that's a biggie. And I, I think each of us should think very long and hard about that one. And not just jump to excuses, but to say, Father, if you want me to do that, I know you'll make a way. Even though it might be uncomfortable. And making a way, we have to remember that him making a way doesn't make a comfortable way. We might have to be uncomfortable to do what is right, to answer his call, to do his will. But then, even though we're a little uncomfortable in our circumstances, we can sleep well at night again. <laughs> and I imagine you'll never, you'll, you'll never go back. You'll wonder how you didn't do it sooner, right? To bring a child into your home who needs a home. Some of you might be being called to start a ministry or to start a home fellowship or even to start a business or to switch jobs. These are drastic things. I told you this talk was not going to be easy. And sometimes the things that keep us up at night that he's telling us to do that we're squishing are not as big a deal as this. <laughs> um, but I thought I would tackle the really big ones. So these are just things to search out in your heart, talk to your husbands, uh, you know, maybe, well, we're going to get into some things here, but th I'm just throwing those out. And there are tons of them. Maybe it's a homeschool co-op or you're, you're, you're feeling called to start a homeschool co-op or you're feeling, I don't, it could be anything. Um, so how do we know? How do we know? You know, because that still small voice is, it's tricky, I think, sometimes to know what is the Father and what is just me, or what is the voice of people in my life <laughs> to influencing me with good intentions, but it's not the Father. So we're going to dive into some things here, but what I, I want us to stop doing is to stop doubting. That idea when he calls us to do something, he will equip us. So we need to, when we know he's called us to do something, let's take adoption. Let's just get the biggie. <laughs> if he has called us to adopt, and I don't really, I will also say this. There are some spiritual, the spiritual gifts in scripture seem to be for certain people, right? Not everyone has all spiritual gifts. But the, the command to adopt and care for the orphans, orphans is not a spiritual gift. It's just for some people. Um, so, yeah, I, I won't go too far there. Um, you know what? I will. I'm going to go there. <laughs> See, the Spirit's telling me to tell you something. So, and it's for me too. In the description below, I'm going to put a link to um, a YouTube video, a talk by... Um, Jason Tao of um, he did this talk at a conference I was at and it was it was very very powerful and it had a big impact on me and I'm still wrestling with it I'm just going to be honest with you I am still wrestling with it but uh, I'm I want you to listen to it and the first time you listen to it I just recommend you have your husband right there with you <laughs> don't listen to it the first time separate from him even have your kids there with you but I'm warning you it's extremely convicting 
Um, so I'll just leave that there. So if he's calling you to do something, we need to, if he's calling us to do something, we need to stop doubting. We need to stop doubting the calling because by doubting the calling, you're just wasting time. And time is precious, especially in these days right now. When he calls us to do something, we better say how high. He says jump, how high? Not, oh, let me confirm that. Let me think. On, I mean, there is some, we'll talk about, you know, being patient and not too jumpy. But also, we need to just obey and stop doubting. Was that really you? I don't know. Was that really you? You know, I reminded of Samuel. Samuel. Samuel, and then finally, okay, I'm here, I'm here. Don't doubt that it's him talking to you. Don't doubt your ability. If he has called you to do something, you must be capable of it. Or perhaps you're not capable of it right now, but he's going to grow you into it. He will equip you in probably miraculous ways as you walk out the obedience. So many times we don't want to obey because the circumstances are not all perfectly set up. But I know you can all attest to this because we've all seen it where when we start walking in obedience, then he reveals the plan as we walk along the path. To demand that he reveals the end to us right now is not fair and that's putting God to the test. We just have to step out in faith right now and say, all right, you're telling me to do this. I will start in that direction and then watch the doors open. And if one door closes, that does not mean it wasn't meant to be. Or if one trial comes, it doesn't mean you're supposed to give up. Sometimes that's us copping out and looking for an out. But as we walk forward, he will give us the ability and the strength and everything that we need. If it's his will for us. Don't doubt your ability. Don't doubt your worthiness. Don't doubt even your salvation. I'm seeing a trend. Well, it's not a trend in our community. It's been around for forever. Everyone wants to unsave everybody. If you don't do this, you're, are you really in covenant? If you don't have this gift, are you really in covenant? You do it like that? Are you really in covenant? Do you even love the Father? And everybody, not everybody, there are certain people with loud voices, so it can feel like everybody, who want us to constantly doubt ourselves. Now, to check ourselves and our obedience and our faith, okay, but not to doubt your entire salvation every time some you push play on YouTube. You must stop that. And just because someone says to you in their opinion, if you don't walk this part out like that, you must not be in covenant, does not mean that they are correct. Even with, and sometimes it's really nice, well-intentioned people. I'm not saying break off from them, but just know and be confident in your own covenant relationship with the Father. And if you really do have doubts about that, go back to the beginning and start your walk again. But you don't have to doubt your salvation all the time. That's a trick of the enemy to keep you paralyzed from digging into the meat of scripture and from doing anything useful in the kingdom. And then, when, like I said, when trials come, don't doubt that the Father called you to do this or that. Because trials will come, especially when you're doing what the Father has told you to do. That's when Satan will send lots of attacks your way. So don't give up easily. Um, let's talk now about how to know God's will because it's kind of the same topic. And again, this could be hours and hours and hours. So knowing what to do, and I don't mean, uh, obviously if things are Torah, you have to do Torah. You know, we're all going to follow Torah. But these other issues that are sort of optional, like should I adopt? Should I not adopt? Should I move? Should I not move? This is what we call knowing his will, seeking his will when we have different choices in front of us. So there's, I have three things to tell you about this. Um, and there's more and there's more and there's more, but just off the top of my head. Number one, to know God's will, you must first have already surrendered your entire life to him. If you're saying to the father, show me your will, do you want me to go this way or that way or make this choice or that choice? But you're holding back some part of your life and saying, well, Father, I'll give you all the rest of my life, but not this part. I get this part to myself first. I don't think you can 
fully walk in his will that way. You're not. And you're kind of putting him to the test. So let's look at Luke 9, 23, 26. Yeshua said, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself. Let him take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desire, desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever will lose his life for my sake will save it. For what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world, but forfeits his own self? For whoever will be ashamed of me and my words of him will the Son of Man be ashamed when he comes in his glory and the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. So you're saying to the Father, I don't know, God, should I take this job or should I take that job? What is your will for me? But you're not fully keeping Shabbat yet? Or you are looking at inappropriate stuff on the computer? I mean, go back to the earlier podcast, Stop Sinning. You can't fully have Shalom when you have all this other junk. You're saying to the Father, I want you to give me good things. Because, right, isn't that why you want to know which job to take? Because you want to take the best job for you. So you're asking for good things from the Father. You're asking for blessings from Him. You want to walk in His will because that's, that's where the blessings are. But you're holding something back? How dare we? And it's a hard one, isn't it? It's a hard one for me, too, and there's things that I need to think about. So we go back to the earlier podcast. No compartments. You either have surrendered your life to Him completely, surrendered completely to be a disciple of Yeshua, or you're lukewarm. And he hates lukewarm. He hates it. What good are you? I'll walk in your ways when it's convenient and when it's easy and when it comes with a better benefits package. But over here, I get to do whatever I want. It doesn't work like that. You're all in or you're all out. If you're going to call yourself a disciple of Yeshua, be all in. He's given us so much. How dare we hold anything back? He sacrificed his entire life for us. How dare we hold back from him and then desire good things from him? So as you seek his will and as you have choices to make in your life, first make sure that you have completely surrendered. And I'm not saying you have to be perfect to seek his will. These things are all done at the same time. But if you're holding on to something, now's a great time to let it go. <laughs> if you're at a fork in the road somehow in your life. One thing I think about um, that keeps me motivated sometimes to keep doing what is right is I, I ask myself, what do I want my legacy to be? Someday, who knows when, I will be gone. I will die. And what do I want my legacy to be? Do I want my legacy to be that, um, oh, she was a great lady. She watched all of those TV shows. What is, that's not a legacy at all. <laughs> or do I want my legacy to be some sort of kingdom difference that I made? Not that I need people to remember me, but maybe if they think of me at the time, they can think of a kingdom difference I have made in their lives. And then they can forget me. That is fine. <laughs> or maybe they don't even know I did the thing for them, but it made a kingdom difference because the Father sees it all. Whether people know it or not, I want to leave a legacy of good, of doing good, of making a difference, of doing something meaningful. And for me right now, you guys know, it is homeschooling my kids. It is doing the best I can with them to make them solid disciples of Yeshua, to make them loving people. That's my legacy right now. That's my mission. I do this Torah sister stuff and I love you guys, but you're not the main thing for me. <laughs> you're just not. But then Tor Sisters was also part of his plan for me. And I can look back now and I can send this. Some of what I talk about here is when I look back a few years ago and I can see that I was supposed to do much more then. And I can see that I couldn't sleep at night because I wasn't answering his call to do more with the Tor Sisters community. And I apologize to you for that. It was foolish and it was selfish and it was fear-based. Um, and I still struggle with that a great deal. Um, but the more I obey and the more I do, you know, to me, crazy stuff, the better I sleep at night. And that's the honest truth. The more I do crazy stuff that he tells me to do, the better I sleep at night. Now, having said all that, 
if something turns out to be a wrong choice, let's say you're, you're chasing after God's will and you're like, ooh, I, I thought his will was this, but it turned out that was a big dead end. You just pivot. You pivot and you go back and you make the other choice or whatever it is. Most things in life are not set in stone. I mean, adoption is set in stone, but a lot of things are not completely set in stone. A lot of things in life, um, because he is a good, merciful God, we can sort of change our minds about later. So to stay paralyzed in the in the in the the place of making a choice is not where he wants us to be. You don't get paralyzed and just stuck forever. You have to make a choice and move forward with it, uh, seeking him. But don't freak out that if it ends up wrong, that you can't sort of backpedal a little bit. Sometimes there's consequences, I know, but don't be paralyzed. So again, we're talking about knowing his will. The first one is to surrender your entire life to him. The second thing that you have to be doing in order to know his will is to be seeking wisdom. The Bible has a lot to say about seeking wisdom. We'll just start with James 1, 5. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to you. Go do a study on seeking wisdom. Don't just seek, do you want me to take this job or that job? Maybe seek it differently and say, Father, give me wisdom. Um, just go do it. I'm talking too long here, so I, I won't go too far, but go do a study on wisdom and all the ways to, to know wisdom. And you should ask other people for counsel, but don't be seeking to please other people. Asking other people for advice or counsel when you have choices to make in your life is good, but don't make the choices in order to please other people. The choices we make in life ought to be to please our Heavenly Father and to stay in His will and doing what He wants us to do, not to please our parents um, or to please our coworkers or whoever. So surrender your entire life to Him. Seek wisdom. The third thing, the, the last thing for knowing God's will is to know God, to know Yehovah. How do we know Yehovah? By being in our Bible and spending time in prayer. That's the way we know the Father. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in Yehovah with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to Him and He will make your path straight. So submit to Him. You're surrendering your, surrendering your entire life to Him. Lean not under on your own understanding. Therefore, then, you're depending on Him. You're seeking His wisdom. You're seeking Him. And how do you know Him except to talk with Him, to listen to Him, and to read His words to you in the Scriptures? Psalm 119, 105, of course, Your word is a lamp for my feet and a light on my path. Romans 12, 1 and 2, I urge you, brothers, by the mercies of God, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what is the good, well-pleasing, perfect will of God. If you want to know the will of God, you transform your mind by knowing him. How do you know him? You spend time in the word and you talk to him. This is very stuff a lot of us have heard, you know, back when we were in Sunday school our entire lives. It is not any different. You want to know which job to take? Are you in the Word? And, you know, do you, in it, you, some of you who are not in the Word, you might not realize the correlation there. After you're in the Word for a while and you just get to know His heart better, you'll see the correlation. It correlates to everything in your life. You cannot Follow God's heart and follow his will if you don't know the one you're following. Ephesians 5, 15 and 20. Watch carefully how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Don't be foolish, but understand what the will of Yehovah is. Don't be drunken with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the spirit, speaking to one another in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, singing, making melody in your heart to Yehovah, giving thanks always concerning all things in the name of Yeshua to Yehovah, even the Father, subjecting yourselves to one another in the fear of Messiah. 
love others, seek him. It's the Torah. Love God, love others. A lot of people, and when I was very young, I used to really stress about knowing God's will. What college do I go to? Which career path? You know, who to marry? All these things. When we are, this is how someone explained it to me once. Our path, our faith walk in making these choices is not always this choice or this choice. This choice is all wrong and this choice is all good. This choice is completely not his will for your life. This choice is completely his will for your life. If, you're, if you've surrendered your whole life to him and if you're seeking wisdom and if you know him because you spend time in his word, then you have, I believe, this huge like circle of choices. And within that circle, you have lots of choices and lots of options of how you traverse this life which college and and who you marry you know it's that old thing where pe- you know the world says you have one soulmate i don't believe that to be true the father gives us choices and when we obey torah there's a lot of different people that you could have a great marriage with because you're both seeking him this is how his will works when you're seeking him with your whole heart because you've given your life to him and you know him you have choices Therefore, sisters, I encourage you to chase after what you think he is telling you to do. Don't be paralyzed with fear. Don't doubt yourself. Don't make excuses. And in future podcast episodes, we're going to dive into some of these little topics, um, especially the ones where um, we can make excuses because those excuses stop us from doing good. And then we get, um, what is the opposite of Shalomi? We get stressed out. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> because we're not doing what we should and we can't sleep at night and I want you to sleep at night the times are dark in the world the times are um, just sinful and in some ways disgusting and people are getting afraid but we ought to be at peace um, and I think the father is going to start asking more and more of us uh, not more of us but more asking each of us to do bigger things and harder things and bigger things does not mean having a youtube channel or something like that it means stepping out in faith right where you're at maybe it's doing what you're already doing but doing more of it Um, and doing things that you might have previously thought were just crazy and insane but i believe he'll he'll equip you he'll give you what you need so stop being afraid and start doing what is right. So that's all, sisters. I hope that this blesses you, and I will talk to you in the next podcast. Bye.